guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a super long overdue video. I feel so bad that this is going up so, so long after it was promised, but I did attempt to film this video one time and I realized that I had gotten a few questions and I wanted to get to all of them and I wanted to recognize all my subscribers that had submitted questions for my Q&A video, so I have decided to split this Q&A video. So you're gonna get two parts. So I'm gonna film part one and answer as many questions as I can without feeling like this video is like two hours long. And then I will answer the rest of the questions in the next part. So stay tuned for all of that. Also, if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Karen Harris. And I usually upload every other day so you do get quite a bit of content from me. And I hope that you will consider subscribing to my channel. Also, I am going to do a little giveaway in this video as well. Now, this video came from a giveaway, so I hope you guys don't mind, but I just thought I would sneak this in here. I feel kind of bad because I have been promising a lot of giveaways for December, but it has just been a crazy month. I went on a quick road trip with my best friend who moved to California, and then just the holidays just like sneak up on you, man. It's crazy. And also, I am reorganizing my room. So hopefully in 2018, you guys will see me with a new background. Fingers crossed, I am gonna be pretty basic. And I got the IKEA set up. I was doing so much research on like vanities and stuff like that. And right now I have an awesome like writing desk, but that is like strapped. It is like full capacity. I can't fit anything else into it. So it's time to say goodbye to my desk and so I did the two sets of Alex 9 drawers and then I did two of the five drawer units and then I did a tabletop. So I'm gonna start filming in front of that. Hopefully that'll be, you know, a nice change of scenery. I am really excited though to have this new setup because now I have way more space and it actually makes me feel like I have not as much makeup because the drawers are so big and I can actually have like a highlighting drawer and a blush drawer and bronzer drawer and I have a drawer for like my face palettes and stuff so it's really exciting. Once I get everything organized I want to do a collection video. I personally love watching collection videos so I hope you guys are excited for all of that new stuff. Also I'm gonna show a picture of my Poshmark account. I'm gonna be selling makeup on there. Just seems like the easiest app for me to use and yeah so check it out. I'm gonna have I'm gonna sell all my Morphe palettes I'm kind of done with Morphe guys, so definitely check my Poshmark. I've got some high-end makeup that just doesn't work with my skin tone and all kinds of things. And also follow me on Instagram stories because I have some stuff that I just want to get rid of, but it's not like bad. Like I have a bunch of makeup brushes and stuff I want to get rid of. So if you guys, you know, have a need, just DM me on Instagram and I will try and reach out to you guys and get some brushes out to you. Also, I want to say hi to Andrea. She actually won the ColourPop palette and I've had a little bit of conversation with her. Um, she's just the sweetest girl. I have no idea how old she is, but she told me she's studying to be a translator, which I think is so cool. So shout out to her and congrats on winning. I haven't been able to do a ton of giveaways, but of course guys, I buy all this makeup. I mean, it's not like handed to me or sent to me. So I hope you guys are enjoying just a few people I've managed to like win stuff from me. I hope you guys are enjoying your makeup and things like that. So anyway, so much blabbering. So little time, but let's get into it. The first question is from Coolish Girl 4 and I actually know her. Her name is Amber, and she asks, "What is your favorite ColourPop palette?" And honestly, I have to say, my favorite ColourPop palette is the "I Think I Love You" palette, and it's the most basic ColourPop palette, but I love it so much because I actually took it on my trip when me and my husband went to Dallas and it just worked so well for me. The pigmentation is amazing. Every shade in that palette is so useful and you can just make so many great like daytime and nighttime looks. So as much as I love like crazy fun colorful palettes that like ColourPop does, I think the I Think I Love You palette is one everyone can use. So that is my favorite and honestly you guys, over the holidays, ColourPop's been having such crazy sales. I think it's the perfect time for you guys to try out ColourPop. 
I am obviously not sponsored by the brand. I really am so excited to see how much the brand has grown. And the reason I recommend them is because I do get DMs every once in a while from people asking me to recommend more affordable palettes and honestly you can't go wrong with ColourPop and I'm so like sad for my wallet because like their palettes were selling for like $12.50 like the last couple of days and I'm like why did I rush to get all of these palettes so if you can get them on a deal I would 100% recommend you doing that. Alger21 says thanks Karen would love to enter your giveaway. Kayla, who I know I went to college with her, she said, I love hearing about ColourPop. I was curious about them and I have never tried their products. Thanks for the video. I hope you get a chance to try them soon, girl. They're awesome. Shay so for the Q&A, Shay asked, for the Q&A, how about naming your most loved and used palettes? So it's a little bit tough because I'm definitely an eyeshadow palette junkie. So if you look at my eyeshadow, like if you look at my makeup collection as a whole, I definitely have a lot of eyeshadow palettes. So it's a really tough call to say what are my most loved and most used, but to be very honest, I feel like I'm always using ColourPop palettes just because they seem to come out with so many. I also really love my Pat McGrath palettes. I wish I had more time to play with those. And I love my Color Drain Queen of Hearts palette. I think that's one of their best palettes ever. I have their mini palettes. Those are really good too, but the Queen of Hearts palette still captures my heart. And then they have that new one that's coming out in a couple of days so it'll be interesting to see what people's thoughts are on that new palette but those are some of my favorite and most loved palettes especially for this year. Okay Yoshi C asks what is your favorite highlighter and I love that question. I actually have quite a few highlighters if you guys haven't seen my highlighter collection video I'll link it up in the cards for you guys I think it's a pretty fun one. I also did a video where I swatch all my golden highlighters I think that video deserves so many more views, not because I made it, but it's kind of funny um, when you see all of these like well-known highlighters swatched together, they all look the same. So honestly, I think you should definitely watch that if you're on the market for a new highlighter because I swatched like Whisper of Guilt, Oh Darling, um, Heat Wave, um, just so many big famous ones that have come out this past year and they all look the same so it's really funny but I have to say my favorite highlighter is from the drugstore it's Milani's 04 highlighter it is so bronzy and gorgeous with my skin tone I just think it like melts in my into my skin and just looks flawless on me at all times and honestly I feel like if I only had one highlighter it would be that one and I'd be totally fine with it. Shelly asks what are your all-time favorite Super Shock shadows and lip products from ColourPop? So I must say I do have quite a big Super Shock shadow collection and I also had a lot of ColourPop lip products. I've actually stopped buying their lip products because I don't really like their ultra mattes and I don't like the ultra satins because they don't dry down. Um, I do like their blotted lips and I like a lot of their blotted lips so I would honestly say any of them. I have some back here so I was trying to think if I could remember any of the names off the top of my head but I do like the blotted lips in the summertime paired with a lip gloss. I think it's like the perfect popsicle lip. Um, but other than that I can't think of any other and I don't like their glosses either because I'm just not a gloss person. I have a few glosses. I'm trying to like dabble into the gloss realm but overall liquid lipsticks are my favorite and Colourpop just doesn't make any that I personally love. Um, and then as far as Super Shock shadows, I'm such a basic girl when it comes to eyeshadow. I love like champagne colors and just any like bronzy gold tone shadows so I would say like millionaire um I have so many I have so many this whole drawer is full of ColourPop um super shock shadows so like I know this one I love this is Amaze by ColourPop it's one of my first ever super shock shadows I love this one it's called Vega um this gold one is called Cheap Date just anything that's golden or bronzy this one is Kathleen Lights very pretty shade and then I also love this is from the Kathleen Lights collection as well this is my all-time favorite ColourPop Super Shock shadow it's ColourPop Telepathy and I love it so much because okay I gotta put this away let me see if I can swatch this for you it is literally like the most beautiful chartreuse 
eyeshadow ever and I really had not seen an eyeshadow of this color until I saw Telepathy and I feel like a lot more makeup brands have done colors like this since but at this time when this particular shadow came out it was definitely rare and so I would say Colourpop Telepathy is one of my favorite Super Shock shadows. Okay, Jennifer Ford says, I absolutely love Colourpop products. They have amazing quality products for an affordable price. Thank you so much for this giveaway. I'm so excited. And then she said, what are your holy grail drugstore products? So, um, I feel like I could maybe do a whole video on that to be super honest. And I'm not very well prepared for this Q&A because I didn't want to read the questions ahead of time. Of course I've seen them, but I don't know them all off the top of my head, you know what I mean? So just in general, I think some of my favorite products, I love drugstore mascaras because I honestly think luxury mascaras are overpriced for what they do. I love um, some drugstore brushes, like if you consider Real Techniques drugstore, I love brushes. I think you can find really good brushes from Royal Techniques. I love a lot of things from Wet n Wild. I like their foundation. I like their highlighters. I love the Flower Beauty sponge. I love the Flower Beauty blushes. So there's quite a few things from the drugstore that I do like. So maybe what I'll do is I'll put it in my phone for ideas for a video that you guys might like to see, which is like my favorite drugstore products. And uh, I'll have you look forward to that because I think that will be kind of a fun video to film. Stephanie Lindo says, Hey Karen, my question is at some point you wanted to become, uh, do you want to become a makeup artist? Also, what's your favorite highlighter ever? So my favorite highlighter ever is the Milani one to be very honest. And at some point, do I want to become a makeup artist? Um... So I've dabbled in the realm of makeup artistry and I love it, but honestly, at the end of the day, I feel like I love doing my makeup the most and I feel like that's probably how, how a lot of YouTubers feel. It's so different doing your own makeup every day because you get so used to your face. It's almost like a sixth sense. Um, makeup artistry is a very challenging job. If you think being a makeup artist is easy, let me tell you, you are so wrong. I have done so many friends makeup and stuff like that. Like I'll do friends makeup like special occasion. I've done a few proms. It is so stressful and it's fun. It's super rewarding. I'm not trying to um, like discourage anyone from that wants to be a ma makeup artist, but the truth is it's not glamorous like people make it look on YouTube because YouTube is different from being a makeup artist. A makeup artist is on their feet constantly. If you don't have a makeup chair, most people are just sitting like lower than you so you have to bend. Like I did a wedding the other, like this summer and it's so bizarre because you don't realize, like I have a tall chair here at home in my beauty room, but when I'm on location, I don't have all those luxuries. So I had to bend and do like everyone's makeup, the bride, the bridal party. It was like four or five girls. I mean, it's back breaking work. So I would do it. I love doing it if I get the opportunity and somebody wants me to do their makeup. I would hold wholeheartedly volunteer to do it, but I can never see being a makeup artist as my full-time job because it's not something that I'm super like passionate about to the point where I would want to do it full time. I think it's a very um, revolving career where, or an evolving career where you don't have, you know, unless you're working in like Hollywood or LA or New York, like where I live, um, there's not that much work to, to find that I know of. And I don't know that I'm ready to like invest that kind of time in it. So I definitely love to do it as a hobby. If anyone asks me to do their makeup, I have a makeup page for people in the area to contact me and have me do their makeup. I would totally do it if any opportunity came around, but it's not something I'm gonna like quit my job and do full time. So hopefully that clarifies your question. Okay, and then Elizabeth asks, would love to win this palette. I just bought a MLP highlighter, so My Little Pony highlighter and the three Super Shock shadows. My first ColourPop order, can't wait to get it. And then she said, what is your most and least favorite current beauty trend? So my most favorite beauty trend right now, I feel like I would say lip gloss, but I don't like love it. Like I'm not like, oh my God, lip gloss. It's fun. 
it's definitely something I've strayed from for a long time. It's so windy here in North Dakota. Like, lip gloss is honestly like a nightmare scenario for me because it like gets caught in like your hair gets caught in it and such a nightmare so um maybe that's like a middle ground one and I honestly this isn't even trendy anymore it's just a thing I definitely love like the warm eyeshadow palette trend I can't stop blowing stuff I mean I think it's awesome so I love that I do love highlighter I know some people like abuse it like me but um who doesn't love like glowing glowy skin so I think I would say most favorite is warm eyeshadow palettes and glowy skin. Least favorite trends are just like I hate the silly sponges. I think they're so stupid. They probably work really great but I just refuse to try them because I'm like you know what all those like beauty sponges work well for me. I don't need to I don't need to save product like that bad. So I avoid silly sponges like the plague. I just don't see how they could do a good as good a job as a damp sponge at blending makeup so if there are people that want to correct me please go ahead and do that if you want to send me a silly sponge I would love to give you my address because personally I plan on not spending any of my coin on a silly sponge okay so next question what is your favorite fast food restaurant Sarah Gibbs asked I love that question fast food I like Chipotle I like Poncheros I love blaze pizza have you guys tried blaze I mean I don't know does that count as fast food cuz like for me it's like fast food still needs to be good food so like I'll have McDonald's every once in a while but when I think of fast food I think of like blaze Chipotle I love um, noodles and company oh my god I love noodles and company I've never been that into noodles and company but then all of a sudden I'm like give me all the noodles they have like a Korean beef noodle oh so good so I love noodles and company and then Jenna asks do you have a favorite youtuber what is your favorite makeup product um, do I have a favorite YouTuber? Uh, yes, I I love Makeup Struggles. She's definitely one of my favorite YouTubers. Only because, like, I love YouTubers that are about their subscribers. I think it's really cool. Like, you can just tell, like, Makeup Struggles just doesn't give up. She doesn't give a fuck. And I love that about her channel because it's growing. And it makes me happy that people support her. I also really like uh, Jessica Braun, I believe is how you say it. I, I recently found her channel. She's pretty cool. I love Liv Loves Her Makeup. I've mentioned her channel multiple times. And um, I like Stefan and Nicole. And yeah, there's so many YouTubers I like. It's just that it's hard for me to recommend because... I don't know. I feel like my cha my taste has evolved so much in YouTube even. Like the older I'm getting, I'm getting so frustrated with like YouTubers that represent really shady brands. So I've had to really like sit there and go through my YouTube subscription list and like actually like unsubscribe to channels because I just can't and like I don't really love like a lot of the drama channels. Um, I do like watching Care for the Tea sometimes because I just think it's so interesting. Um, she really makes you think and some of the stuff she says I think we can already see as consumers. So I just, I just think it's interesting and I feel like in a sense the beauty community does need to talk more about the issues. Especially YouTubers that are more trustworthy need to bring light to some of these things because there's so many people watching YouTube for the first time. Like there's somebody watching this video and it's their first time watching my YouTube channel. So if they don't hear it from somebody like, hey, guess what? Uh, Jaclyn Hill came out with a palette and then she repackaged it four months later and it's now selling at Ulta for almost $40. Like, I don't think that was very ethical. Like, I've been pretty vocal about it on my channel or on Instagram if you follow me there. So to me, I don't even know where I'm going with this answer, but what I'm trying to say is that I do have a lot of favorite YouTubers. It's tough for me to recommend just one because I... I, I there's some people I watch that I love some of their content, but I don't love all of it. Like, there's some brands that they talk about, I'm like, mmm. And I don't, like, sit there and, like, get mad about it, but, you know, it's like, 
but I like you so much. And But yet, yet you get PR from this one company. So um, another YouTuber I really, really like, actually, she's probably like in my top two is Angelica. Um, I can't say her last name. I know she taught people how to say her last name. Um, she's Swedish, but I love her channel. She's just super sarcastic and she's like super into color we're basically like opposite when it comes to makeup but she like makes me want to try harder with colorful eyeshadow looks so i will link her channel and a few of my other youtubers favorite youtubers in the um description box if anyone's interested i think that'll be really fun for you guys to see some of the youtubers that i follow now as opposed to some of the really weird channels like i'm like I can't believe I used to watch like Manny MUA like I was invested and then I was like ooh like I don't I, I just can't anyway hopefully I answered all of your questions there Jen okay Sophie asks how many siblings do you have I am an only child goodness don't don't laugh at me I I'm I wasn't that spoiled I promise you guys Arsley sorry I'm butchering that what's your favorite palette to use my favorite palette to use Ah, are, I would say, honestly, like creativity-wise, something that makes me feel really cool right now is definitely the Pat McGrath palettes. The dual chromes in that palette, in all of those palettes, are insane. So I really like those. I'm also really loving using all of the ColourPop ones. I just think they're so fun. They're so easy. They're so tiny. So those are my current favorite palettes to use. Kim M says, what is my favorite Sri Lankan food? Oh my gosh. I wonder if Kim is from Sri Lanka. Like, that's pretty specific. Or you've been paying attention um, to the fact that I'm from Sri Lanka, if anybody <laughs> didn't know. Um, so I love all Sri Lankan food. We were actually just in Minneapolis, which is four hours from where I live. And there's one Sri Lankan restaurant in Minneapolis. So if you guys are from the Twin Cities area or anywhere in Minneapolis or ever get into Minneapolis and you're in the Midwest, um, it's called House of Curry. And they do a pretty good job. I was just there this last weekend and I had their house of curry like rice plate. So I had rice and curry, which was amazing. And of course, I love kotu. Um, my husband likes kotu too. Um, string hoppers, regular hoppers, kiribat. Oh my god, I love kiribat. I love my mom's crab curry. I would literally kill for her crab curry. Um, just everything. Samosas. You, you name a Sri Lankan food and Kim, I will tell you if I don't like it because there's literally not anything I can think of that I don't like that as far as Sri Lankan food goes. So very, very proud of being from Sri Lanka and very happy to have grown up with that culture because there's no food like Sri Lankan food, guys. I promise you. April says, I love the My Little Pony palette. My question is, what's your favorite holiday 2017 collection that's coming out or that is already out? So, um, for favorite holiday, I have to say that I did end up picking up um, a few things from the MAC holiday collection. I bought uh, two highlighters, an eyeshadow, and the face MAC Fix Plus set, um, but that was not my favorite collection. I honestly think just overall from like my favorite things that I bought from holiday is the Makeup Forever palette that I spent like way too much money on. It's like a hundred and something dollars. I will link me reviewing that palette, but it's like, I don't buy a lot from Makeup Forever. It's not one of those brands that like speaks to me. It's just kind of there. I know they're innovative. I know they're creative. I know a lot of people love their products, but it's never like really like called to me. So this palette, like when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, like I was like, I need that in my life, like right away. So I bought it during the sale and I just love that palette. I think it's beautiful. The, like the powders just like melt into my skin, which is awesome. And I'm an eyeshadow junkie. So it was really nice for me to fall in love with a face palette. And yeah, I'm just so pumped to own that thing. Um, it just makes me so, so happy. So that is my favorite purchase from holiday 2017. Uh, Rus Relina. I hope I said that right. If you could only use one makeup brand for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ooh, ColourPop, 
I know they don't have a foundation yet, but I can use their concealer as foundation. I'm pretty sure they are coming out with foundation because I was watching one of their like social media people on Instagram stories and she's like, I'm trying out a new foundation. Girl, we all know what that means, okay? You guys are coming out with foundations for 2018. You're not fooling anyone or they might come out with it next week, who knows? Um, so I'm pretty sure they're gonna be, have a foundation. I love their concealer, I love their eyeshadows. I love their face products. The only things I really don't like from ColourPop are their lip products, which is fine because I can make it work, like, you know, and I don't like their brow, like, their brow pencils are weird, like, have you guys, I remember, okay, quick story time, when ColourPop first came out with their eyeliner pencils, they came out with this huge range, and they were, like, six bucks, and I was, like, so excited, because I was, like, oh my god, colorful eyeliner that doesn't cost 20 bucks, because, like, Urban Decay has, like, every single color of eyeliner, but their eyeliners are so freaking expensive, so I was so excited, I bought all of these ColourPop eyeliners, and literally, you guys, I I shit you not when I opened up the eyeliners like some of the like the colds just like flew out of the eyeliner like pencil because it was just shitty and my husband was just like and he's like are you gonna are you gonna return those and I was like well I don't I don't know how to return them to color pop now keep in mind this was when they first came out so I just kept them all and they sucked. I don't think I used any of them. I literally one day just ended up tossing them all in the trash because I was so frustrated with that. So that's my little ColourPop story. But honestly, I would I would uh, I would live off of ColourPop because uh, they're currently like killing it for me. Okay, Kimberly asks, which mascara is your favorite mascara that holds a curl, makes them longer, and does not budge 24-7? That is a tall order, girlfriend. Um, so I feel like I have decent lashes. My go-to combination at one point was the L'Oreal Miss Manga mascara, which came in the yellow tube, and then the Maybelline Lash something. It's the one in the blush. Those two together were amazing. L'Oreal discontinued Miss Manga mascara and kept the freaking one in the purple tube which sucks like I don't know what they were thinking with that so that used to be my go-to lash combination recently I've been really enjoying the L'Oreal voluminous black mascara and the troublemaker mascara is actually pretty good too by Urban Decay so that's been my new go-to combination um but yeah I don't know if it's gonna hold a curl for 24 7 like I don't know but I do like drugstore mascaras so hopefully you can try out a few and, and find your favorite combo, but those are some of mine, so hopefully that helps. So the next question is from Christine, and she asks, how long were you watching YouTube videos before starting your own channel? So that's a good question. I actually, uh, I don't even know, because I feel like I started my channel before I even started YouTube, like watching YouTube, because I used to be really into like fashion blogging, and I feel like I was one of those fashion bloggers that like bloomed before my time, but then I never had like the money to actually afford the technology to have a nice camera or have friends that had nice cameras to take my photos for me. So I used to be really, really big into blogging. And then um, with that, I, I made a few YouTube videos for my blog and I did one, which was like my favorite makeup products or something. It's still up on the internet. I will um, throw up the video I made reacting to my first makeup video on YouTube. Um, which was like seven years ago, which is crazy. I was like, I'm pretty sure I was like single, I was in college, I had a lip ring, like I was a different person, but it's up there. So you can definitely track like the evolution of Karen in the last couple of years since I have been on YouTube for a while. So yeah, I, I, I just kind of did it because I'm so into social media guys, like just with like my major, um, it was something I never learned in school. I feel like I was a generation right before they started teaching like social media and analytics in college so I kind of decided I had to make my own experience and so I dove into like Facebook, blogging, so like blogger, WordPress and YouTube and stuff and it was just fun for me but I felt like I was learning the whole time as well. Okay, Emma asks, what advice would you give someone starting a makeup channel? I collect makeup and feel so relaxed when I pay when I play with it, so I decided to venture into the world of YouTube. So, mm, okay, that's, so makeup and like a YouTube channel, it's a double-edged sword. Um, it depends on how much grit you have because to have a makeup channel, I know a lot of YouTubers get on there and say like, 
oh, you can film on your phone. And it's, and I, yeah, granted, a lot of phones now have really good quality. I personally feel like I like watching channels where there's a little bit of editing, like their videos are put together. I don't like channels where it's like, you know, shaky cam, like really dark. So I think definitely you want to pay attention to quality. You want to make sure you have a decent setup and kind of go from there. If um, makeup is just your hobby and you have a full-time job and YouTube is something you do to relax, I really don't think you need to make a makeup channel. I would definitely stay, I would definitely suggest starting off on Instagram. I feel like that's just kind of a fun media because it's very interactive. You can do your Instagram stories, you can do Instagram lives, you can post pictures, you can post videos. So I think that's kind of a fun way to kind of get into the makeup community without like full blown having to invest in like a camera and a tripod and lights and things like that. Yeah, I don't know. So I. I know a lot of people just say like do it start now but it can be very discouraging like for me sometimes I'm like oh man like I work so hard to edit these videos and like nobody's really watching them or I don't really think a lot of people in my town like know about my channel or anything like that plus weirdly like I'm shy like I'm not like shy to sit here in my room and like talk to a camera but when like people bring on my beauty channel like I don't take myself seriously enough which is really silly because I, I don't want to be like, oh, I'm a beauty YouTuber guru, like everyone should do their makeup like me. So I, I feel very like, oh, I don't want to talk about it, but I want people to know about it. Like it's really awkward. I don't know. Somebody needs to help me with that. But so that's my double edged sword. It's really fun. So if you're just doing it for fun, it's a hobby. You're not going to sit there and like worry about numbers and make yourself feel bad. Then definitely do it. But if it's something like you're like, oh, I'm going to turn this into a career, like I don't need to like get a job, I'm just going to do YouTube, then you're going to want to make sure you're like set up for success, you have the right equipment, you can actually afford it because YouTube is really freaking expensive. Um, and I don't even want to start talking about how much money I spend on makeup in a month. It's really quite scary. <laughs> So just a few things to keep in mind. I don't want to discourage anyone, but I just feel like it's a very serious commitment personally um, because if you have a channel and the quality is not that good and your content isn't that exciting, you're probably going to end up pretty discouraged. So, you know, it's, it's just something to think about, but it's also really wonderful because you can make tons of friends and things like that. I personally would say start on Instagram and see what kind of response you get. I just think it's a great way to test out the waters before investing in all the equipment and things like that. So hopefully that wasn't too discouraging. I love you guys. I want everyone to start a YouTube channel. I, I just want people to keep in mind, like I have bad days where I'm like, <laughs> like all I want is to get to a thousand subscribers. Like that sounds really silly. And like, I don't want you guys to think I'm like numbers focused, but it, it does make your day when like, you see comments and like nice comments from people and they're like, oh my gosh, I love your channel. Like you're so sweet. It just makes me happy because like it makes me feel like I'm actually making a difference in the world. <laughs> so anyway, enough about that topic, but th that's my five cents on starting your own YouTube channel. Okay, so Tiana says, question, if you could only buy one brand of makeup for the rest of your life, what brand would it be and why? I already answered that ColourPop. And then Meebs asks, my question, do you like living in North Dakota? What are your pros and cons on it? I'm from North Dakota and I personally don't mind it. Shout out to Meebs. Thank you so much for your question. So um, let's go with the cons first. Definitely the weather. If you guys don't know, Sri Lanka is a little island off the coast of India. It's basically like Hawaii. Like, So I went from Hawaii to living in North Dakota and it's honestly polar opposite like I don't know how else to explain it it's cold as shit up here in the winter time I love the summers I think they're beautiful and um I think North Dakota has its own charm but the weather is definitely something to consider when you are living in North Dakota it is very dangerous when it's icy out there's a lot of blizzards we do not shut down when there's a blizzard I know like People always joke like when it rains in LA, people like don't know how to function. Well, it doesn't work like that when you live in Fargo and there's like a blizzard and it's white out, you still have to go to work. Like you can't call in blizzard. Well, you can, but not very often. So I just remember being in college and walking to class and like how 
horrible it is. And I know a lot of people, well, I don't know personally anyone, but I've heard that a lot of people in North Dakota are on antidepressants for the weather, which I think is crazy. Like, I literally drive down the street sometimes in the winter. I'm like, why do I live here? Like, it's so awful. But some of the pros for me are Fargo has really become my home. I've lived here the whole time I've lived in the U.S. I met my husband here. His dad lives in North Dakota as well. So we've kind of created our own family here. And I always wonder if we'll move somewhere, but he is so like happy where we're at and we just bought a house. So I just feel like it's a great place for our family. Um, and now we're getting a little more diverse too, which is great. And we've got like better restaurants and things like that. And there's like a little bit more culture. So that makes me happy. It's not a hundred percent there yet, but I think it's getting there. And yeah, you know, it's like, uh, small pond, big fish, like I know where everything is. Sometimes when we travel, I'm like, oh God, like when we were in Dallas um, in September, I was like, oh my God, this traffic sucks. Like having to wait in a car for an hour just to get to your destination, like that used to be my life in Sri Lanka. Like I would have to go, just like leave to go to school an hour before school started just so we could make up enough time for traffic. And like now in Fargo, it's like you don't have to do that and you get so used to it because like, you know, there's gotta be some perks. So you might die driving, but the drive won't take very long. So yeah, those are some of my pros and cons. <laughs> if you think of anything else, Meebs, do leave it in the comments for this video. Uh, DE1978 says, awesome giveaway. Uh, what would be a great spa indulgence for you? So for me, I do have a little, little treat that I give myself usually every month or so. I will get like a facial or a massage. So that's pretty basic, but there are some things that I really want to look into. One is uh, microblading, but I'm scared because I don't know of anyone like amazing where I live. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking, but I'm not looking. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. And then I would love to get my, uh, derma, derma planing where they like remove that top layer of your skin. I don't know if these are spa treatments or more so like, I don't know, like treatments but I these are some of the things I'm curious about and I really want to get laser hair removal I'm like why haven't I spent money on that that seems awesome like I really want to get my upper lip uh, that would be my number one and then probably just like getting hair off my legs because I really hate shaving plus I live in North Dakota so you really don't have to shave like half the year but um yeah those are some of the things that I think would be awesome like if I could do anything so Bianca Earl asks, what's your favorite palette and lipsticks? So my favorite palette, it's so hard because I'm an eyeshadow palette junkie and I feel like my eyeshadow palettes change because I'm constantly playing with new ones. One that I've loved, I think, throughout this whole year is the Queen of Hearts palette, even though I don't use it all the time. I think that's a good one and I like the new Huda palette too. I think it's very very nice and of course the Pat McGrath so I feel like I'm saying the same thing over and over again but hopefully you guys don't mind as far as lipstick goes as far as lipsticks go I love liquid lipsticks that's my preferred form of lipstick just because they last long and I'm not one of those people that constantly reapplies lipstick so my favorite liquid lipstick formula is probably Kat Von D I also okay don't get mad at me for saying this but I do like Jeffree Star because he has some really great nudes for my skin tone I don't like pale pinks, but he has a lot of like um, more like orange based nudes, which I really like, or more brown based nudes. So someday I will do a video showing you guys some of my favorite liquid lipsticks. I have plans to do that. I also do like the colored rain lip liquid lipsticks. I think they last a very long time as well. So as far as regular lipstick formula, not for me. I do have like MAC and stuff like that, but I honestly never wear them. So. Those will be showing up on my Poshmark too. If you guys are interested, shameless plug, check out my Poshmark because I'm selling stuff. I'll link it down in the description box for you guys as well. And then we have SGAR13 asks, what's your favorite liquid lipstick formula? I just answered that. Drugstore and luxury. So drugstore, I didn't mention. Wet n Wild is definitely one of my favorites. I also like the Milani ones. They are a little bit more drying. Some people really hate the Wet n Wild ones. I personally love them. I don't know why people don't like them. I think they're so great. And my go-to eye look is honestly like a blended out like brown eye with like a gold lid. I don't really think that's a smoky eye. I just It's the, like my go-to eye look for anything is like 
a nice glittery shadow on the lid and then like a nice brown blended into the crease so yeah okay so I'm gonna stop right there with the questions for part one because I, I already know this video is gonna be like an hour long and hope you guys enjoyed stay tuned for part two it'll be either go up the same day or not I don't know yet and then if you guys want to win this this Tarte clay play palette all you have to do is leave me a comment with ideas of videos you might like to see on my channel so let me know video ideas things you think I should do the way will end the 31st of January at midnight central time and then I'll announce the winner hopefully on the 1st of February. Hope you guys will go ahead and enter. I've heard this palette is fabulous. I actually have one for myself but I haven't played with it yet so either I'll give them all away um, or I'll keep one for myself but I have a few more and I want to throw them in giveaways here and there. I'd love to give you guys more more makeup but like I said, I purchase all of this myself, so go ahead and uh, subscribe to my channel, of course, and I'll leave all the other information below for the giveaway, and don't forget to check out part two. Um, thank you guys so much for all your support. I hope you guys have an awesome end of 2017. Bye, guys. <laughs>